Everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zane. I'm joined by the one, the only, my good brother, Rich Stambouli. Oh, what's up? Yeah. No, but we put each other's fingers in each other's mouth. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. That is legitimate. We do have that picture, and it's gross. I we, feel did, like... we did it at the uh, the Garden. Oh, and I think we did it in Vegas, too. <laughs> we did it in Vegas also. We did not do it at Arthur Ashe. I didn't even see you. I know. You, uh, uh, at the event. You, you were like, we pre-gamed. We had a nice little group at Press 195. Shout out to Press 195. Great sandwiches. And I was like, where are you going to come? And you were like, I'm here. I was like, here, where? And you're like, I'm in the arena. And it was like five o'clock, dude. Yeah. And it was just you and John Alba. It was me and John Alba, <laughs> dude. We were just chilling. No, I got there at six. I got there at six o'clock. Taking turns interviewing each other. <laughs> <laughs> we would just ask the same question to each other and answer the same way. Uh, we're going to talk about that, obviously, a whole lot more. Uh, I am tired today. Yeah, you had a big outing yesterday. I had a big outing. We had a big golf outing yesterday at the New York Country Club in Spring Valley. Yes. A, uh, I've never experienced anything like that. Yeah? I've, it was... Off the, off the hook? You sent me a blurry picture, and I was like, wow, this looks like a lot of fun. It was... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm tired, and I didn't drink. Mm -hmm. So everybody's loaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't drink because I'm I got to drive far to go home first of <laughs> right, all. Yeah, and I kind of have to be responsible. Right. Um, you're a dad. I'm a dad. I wanted to come home. Yeah. I got home at like eight o'clock, but it was insane. You took the, the Tesla. I took the Tesla. Nice. Yeah. Smooth ride. That very yeah. smooth ride. I couldn't do it with a Mustang. You could have just closed your eyes and, and the it car just, just magically appear home. there. <laughs> so I'm very tired. It was a uh, I've I've never experienced a golf outing like that with 36 strippers. <laughs> And, and 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 just <laughs> and you <laughs> sheer amounts of pot i've never experienced that before that's, listen very that's enjoyable though who who i was a good boy though yeah i always course. am yeah. i gotta be i gotta be in charge of stuff i don't mess around but uh wednesday was a big night also aw grand slam here in queens new york oh boy what a day it was a very i had a blast i had a blast at the show yes. i did i had a really i know you did no, I'm not, i just left I'm not, early i'm not smirking at that at all I think we both had different experiences. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about our experiences. I, I'm not going to talk about my entire experience. Okay, you, you leave some of it I'm out. I'm going to leave some of it out, yeah. but it was wild. You know what, though? The text from Tony, <laughs> the the message from Tony, <laughs> I think he knows. I don't know about that. I think that was pretty funny. I couldn't stop laughing when you sent that screen cap. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> you got in trouble. I, listen, man. Dude, Rich got weird. Rich went over to Sting and started like smearing his face paint off his face and putting it on himself. He goes, "Now I'm you." It was really weird. It was weird because it was like a perfect match. Like he didn't have makeup on anymore, and it was just all on my face. And then I left. <laughs> oh God! All right. Uh, where do you want to begin, Rich? Uh, might as well talk about uh, Grand Slam um, surprises and title changes. Uh, so. Grand Slam was a fun show to Jeff on. I had a great time. Yeah, it was a really, it was a fun show. Mm -hmm. It was great to see a bunch of people. It was great to see some of the viewers. People came over and said hello. Uh, I, it, it was funny because everybody, I put out that tweet. I'm like, make sure you say hello. And people come up and goes, I'm saying hello. And they would just walk away. I'm saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, great. That's, that's the best engagement. That is the best a engagement. A nice hello. We, we, I, I met a few people. One guy, one guy, like, uh, not accosted me, but he was just like, he grabbed me by my arms and was like, Rich, Rich from Batman. I was like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, hey, I'm a big fan. And then he left. I was like, all right, cool. Love Thank it. you. I, I appreciate it. it. Um, John Alba was there. I ran into John Alba. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Jess and John did a nice little bit. For yes. The internet. People got a kick out of that. I saw that too. Um, that was a lot. The whole show was a lot of fun. My one gripe, and I will say it is a gripe. Uh, not a fan. The show ended close to one, I think. Yeah, very late. And I got out of there in the middle of Rampage. So at about what? like 11.15 to catch the 11.29 train. And listen, we jetted. Like we we legit. 11.15 to catch the 11.29. So you, you had to run. To get out of the arena to the train. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a part of this my story that I'm going to leave out. But okay. I, let's just say I, I made it out in time to catch the train. Well, you they know how very I got helpful. out. I, I got out with a secret passage. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Bob knows that oh, building well. Oh, yeah. So he brought us through like this, like right where we were, mm -hmm. this special side door. That's for like technically for like production. That's how um, Alex got out. But it was all on the outside. It was where like they keep all their stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Alex got out, and then you go around and through the gate. Yeah. So that's how I always do the U.S. Open. So right. when we were at the U.S. Open a couple of weeks ago, that's how that's how we get out because it's like this shortcut to get out rather than going through the main entrance. Um, <laughs> I took my time to yeah. get to the train. You had the boogie. We bo- we legit were like, are we gonna make it? And by the time we were outside the place we met, it was at that time it was eleven twenty four. Train came, it was coming in five minutes. We ran. We I was like, yo, let's just. Put your wallet in one hand, put your phone in the other, and let's go. And we just like jetted like into the yeah. train, made it. Well, you had to after missing Muda, missing Muda. I'm on rampage tonight. Yeah, I'm, but uh, but you ran alert. out of colors. I ran. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was just spit. It was just spit. It was gross. He didn't like that. He did all. not like that, dude. Um, let's go through the show. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Uh, great first match. What, Chris, what is this? What am I doing? I don't know what that is. Does that go somewhere? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think it does. oh boy. Uh oh. <laughs> Did you get that from yesterday? Did one it of the says, ladies give it to you? It's a tweet. Oh, this is for um. One of the ladies gave this to me. And he goes, "Here you go. <laughs> what is this? Just keep it in your pocket." Oh boy. Uh, first match, great match. Uh, Kurt, also, this is the first time Alex, my friend, has ever been to a wrestling show. And okay, very fun show to be at. A very fun show to be at. Our experience was so fantastic that it has ruined wrestling shows for him for the rest of his life. I think we. Apart from getting into the ring, it was the best experience that we've had. Yeah, dude, it, it, it was. Listen, but you guys also started out at like two o'clock. Everybody <laughs> oh, was boy. drinking, like yeah. everybody's having a good time. Nobody was like drunk, drunk. Mm-mm. Uh, Mm-mm. Jess met up with you. Bob met yeah. up with you. Just his cousin Tommy came. So great guy. Yeah, Tommy's like good. Dude. Tommy's a great dude. Uh, so, no Coco. No Coco. No Coco. First, okay. uh, <laughs> do you have that sign that that flashes no Coco right instead of applause? Hey, hey, uh, uh, Tony Khan. You know, I'd be a great comic. I'd be a great comedian. <laughs> oh, man. You know he listens, right? Tony Khan. No. Well, Coco. Coco, I know he yeah. does. Uh, Jericho beating Claudio for the Ring of Honor Championship. We called it. Can't oh, believe they dude. did it. I got I to gotta tell you, this mm-hmm. match, uh, fantastic. What a great opener. Yeah. Uh, Jericho looks like a million bucks. Cesaro is, I, and, and this, these are like the weird moments, right? Mm-hmm. Cesaro is so much bigger when you see him in person, yeah, rather than on TV, yes, like he's big, he's way bigger now on TV. He's a big boy, but even like it's so interesting how like the camera actually makes him smaller. Yeah, you know, you know what it is. He's I I always felt Cesaro was one of those classic wrestlers, and I think he's a classic Vince style wrestler because you can see him from the top of the arena. You can see him from the top. Very well said. Yeah, yeah. You we can see him from the top of the arena. For example, like your seats were pretty close i got nosebleeds but in arthur ash the nosebleeds are still pretty good they're not bad yeah they're not bad you there's also no security so you could just go whatever the hell you want let me just say that (laughs) i listen i applaud that for my own personal gain yeah which is pretty fantastic but you could see cesaro from where we were sitting clear as day yeah you know um great match uh jericho cheated jericho's the new ring of honor champion how do you feel about that do you feel that he put a little more prestige onto that belt or do you feel like does the fan in you say like Ugh. <laughs> no 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 i i i well it, it that, that's a great that's great right mm-hmm. the fan in me the ring of honor right. fan in me is like okay well that's an interesting move uh the business person in me says okay this kind of indicates that tony's ramping up to get tv ready or yes. it is that they're like that's how i feel because you're 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 doing a really smart approach here. Absolutely. You're building Ring of Honor already has, but like, what is the internal fan base for Ring of Honor? What what can they do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, without without like a Christian, you know, the name, the big names, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know what they could do in 2022 <clears throat> on TV. I don't know what they could do 2022 on digital if it's a digital uh, syndication, a digital stream. I don't know what they could do. The, uh, the Ring of Honor value, the viewership value, was never high. Right, right, ever. right, right. It was valuable because it, it did well in small key markets with local ads. That I mean, Sinclair's entire pro, uh, concept behind it was syndication and doing that. Yes. Now. Yeah. So. Yes. With that said. Yes. I, I'm I'm a fan of it. I think it's a good I think it's a good move. I think it adds something, and I think it's a good thank you to Chris Jericho. Also, puts a little shine on Put the a belt. Little shine on the belt. Also, but now you've also ramped up. Okay, well, Chris Jericho, are they going to go back and forth with this? You know, I think Cesaro was uh, 
I, I think that was a good move to have him as a Ring Absolutely. of Honor champion. I think Cesaro would do great in Ring of Honor Absolutely. as their champion. I think Jericho, looking at it now, you know, I, I would say... I would say that I would imagine they're close to a deal. Or this I is going to so. this is going to further uh the process, right? Like let's say you have something mm -hmm. you're, you're you're in negotiations. Right. Well, Chris Jericho's the champion. Chris Jericho was the first AEW champion. Look what it did for AEW when it started. Look what we could do for Ring of Honor now. Yeah. You know, we could probably do decent ratings. I don't know what that number is, though, for Ring of Honor. I don't know what it would be considered positive. Like, we know that Rampage at 477 is not a high number. Mm -hmm. But is 600 a high number for Rampage? Are they happy with that? If Ring of Honor did 350,000 to 400,000 viewers per episode, would they be happy with that? I don't know. I don't know what the value on viewership for Ring of Honor is. I think we're going to go back a little bit here, right? Mm-hmm. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is going to be the mentality of what I'm about to say. Okay. Right? That initial AEW press conference, we were all blown away. Holy shit. They got Chris Jericho. Yes. Okay. Right? First AEW champion. Yeah. Right? Same mentality going into this, right? How do we market this show for TV? Put the belt on a tried and true professional. Everybody knows Chris Jericho. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Arguably on top of the wrestling business for the last 20 plus years. Yeah. Put that belt on him. That's piece one. That's the cornerstone of whatever the new iteration of Ring of Honor is, right? Let's Jericho help the younger guys again. He's going to have... I think he's exhausted his potential matches on regular Dynamite for the most part. Yeah, I... Right? I know he wants to work. Right. Like, yeah, so... Now... Who do you put him with? Now? <clears throat> Now you get the ring of like whoever's going to Ring of Honor, and I feel like you can kind of see who's going to shift to whatever Ring of Honor programming they do. You know, Yuta, Daniel Garcia, maybe Claudio, Samoa Joe, Jay Lethal, like a lot of these dudes, right? Yeah. So you start to build that a little bit. Do you think Jericho will bring those numbers in if they do another hour show? on tv i i think i th yes I, I but i don't know what those numbers could be mm -hmm. you know like i i'm looking at it as ring of honor as a brand and the value associated to the brand wow. we're gonna get to dynamite uh, obviously yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. but but i think this is a interesting discussion to have you know when you look at when you look at it you say okay well what's the value why did tony buy ring of honor right tony bought it for the tape library don't uh obviously controlling that there's tremendous profit in there which they have not used mm-hmm uh, he bought it also to add more to whatever streaming platform that they they go on, whether it's HBO Max or they do something on their own or somewhere else. You need assets, your mm -hmm. value. And it also heightens the value of AEW when you have those assets. Do you think a better move would be to put a Ring of Honor style program on streaming and make it a little more adult? I think Ring of Honor needs to stay closer to what it's been with wrestling. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a great example, right? One of my clients during the pandemic uh, sold off all their assets. Yeah. Right? They were, they, were hunker, they were bunkering down and they said, okay, we're going to sell all our assets. And when the time comes, we could purchase all our assets again. So one of my big clients. Right, right, right. They, sold, they, they essentially gave away millions and millions of dollars worth of stuff mm -hmm. for pennies on the dollar. Guess what happened? They never recovered after the pandemic and they had to sell the business. Because they did not right. hold any any the, the large amount of assets that they did, whether it's you know uh, whatever it is for their business, I don't want to expose the business. Their value was deflated now compared to what it could have been at the purchase time. Yeah, because they don't have anything. So I think for Tony, the library is worth it and the talent is worth it. But where are you putting these people? Right. Is it going to be on TV for an hour? Is it going to be a Saturday show? Is it going to be a Sunday show? It's an interesting question. Is it an internet show? Because all of that will play mm -hmm. a part in how you present this product. Well, also, you would think that it would have to be intermingled with their live programming, like Rampage and Dark and Elevation are. I think, I think they need to stop commingling everything. It, it, listen, I'm, I get it. For me, not a fan, but just because of the time. The time dedicated to doing right. it. Yeah. Like, okay, so we started off yesterday with a dark elevation taping. Right. For an hour. Or, or it was quick. It was like it was 30 quick, minutes. Yeah. It was like 30 yeah. minutes. 
I would say, do you need both those shows? You know, can you turn one of those shows into a ring of honor for the internet? And what would it be? I don't know. You know, when, when, when live wise, you had Minara Suzuki mm-hmm. and Brian Danielson go live on YouTube. That's awesome. And it, and it only did about a hundred thousand live viewers. Mm-hmm. Uh, concurrently at peak, right? right, right it was right. like ninety eight thousand or a hundred thousand. You know, I don't I gotta I don't know if that's a great number. Yeah. I know I don't think it's a great number. What are you gonna do with Ring of Honor? Fifty thousand, sixty thousand? That's right. what they you know, they twenty three thousand like they do for uh like a press conference that's important. I don't know. I think in my head, obviously, you know, the ideal thing would be you go to a live show, right? Yeah. First hour Ring of Honor. Knock it out. Two hours dynamite. Yeah. One hour rampage. Fucking great. Right? Love it. Out of there by 1130. Uh, well, that's another thing you said, right? Should should Ring of Honor be presented in the same type of building that that AW is? I think so. I don't. Really? I think it should be its own separate entity running smaller venues. Like, in the New York market, would you put them in, like, Hammerstein? In New York market, i put them in Hammerstein. Uh, Melrose Ballroom you could mm-hmm. do. You could do Hammerstein. You could do... Irving Plaza. Irving Plaza. Has there been wrestling? Yeah, there has been wrestling in Irving Plaza. Uh, You know, for a pay-per-view, obviously, Mm -hmm. like, big weekends, you could do something big. Mm -hmm. Also, this wouldn't be a complaint if if they ran shows at MSG. If that that show we went to the other night was at MSG, I probably would have stayed longer. Just because I can walk down a staircase onto a train. (laughs) Yeah, I, I I probably would have left the same. You know, or right. or just walk out immediately and take a cab. You know. Yeah, that's right. that's let's, the big difference. Let's right. go through this card. Uh, acclaimed Anthony Bones and Max Caster uh, with Billy Gunn beat Swerve in Our Glory to become the AEW World Tag Team Champions. Uh, great pop for these guys. Fabulous joined them. DJ Who could uh, join them? Uh, Billy Gunn hit Swerve with the Famouser, which led to the pin. I want to see a program between Swerve and Billy Gunn. I want to see that. I want to see Swerve and Billy Gunn. I want to see Billy Gunn and and Keith, uh, Lee. Keith Lee. Oh my God, Billy Gunn uh, versus everybody. Billy we're, Gunn we're team Billy Gunn. Yeah, on this we, podcast. we love it. Uh, I like. I like that. Fabulous was there. F A B O L O U S. And DJ Wu Kid joined the acclaimed. It was a lot of rappers on the show. There were. So uh, listen, that building. There were about thirteen thousand people in that building. Yeah, a little shy of thirteen. Smaller, smaller crowd than last year. I think they shot it better than last year. Yes. Uh, the visuals look great. Yeah. They do that pan, that crowd pan, like the shot from the crowd. Those cranes. Uh, man, beautiful, mm-hmm. beautifully done. You got to hand it to the to the production. Like the production was on point. Yeah, the I know staff a couple of those guys. On They're great. Point. They were very cool. Um, Tony Schiavone interviewed Wheeler Yuta. MJF interrupts. Uh, this led to Wheeler in. Uh, Trying to insult MJF uh, uh, until he pushed him and Tony Schiavone. Yeah, like him knocking Tony Schiavone on his butt. Was okay, so they did something interesting in the stadium for this, mm-hmm. okay? I don't know, and I hope somebody at AEW could tell me, because I, I really was curious about this, because if they did do this, I think it's really smart. So if you were looking on the big screen, right? Mm-hmm. The promo started with... um, The promo started with Wheeler Yuta, right? He was on the big screen. Uh, uh, like in the arena so you could see when mjf came out they cut it mm-hmm. and you saw a little bit of the entrance and then they cut it and everybody started booing yeah right because you cut the screen and they would bring it back mm-hmm. at times like yuda was talking and people would cheer and then they right. would cut mjf would start it for like a second and a half and then cut the yeah. video again yeah, yeah, yeah. they were doing artificial boos that way very interesting i don't know if that was by design yeah or it was just a production error i think i feel like it was by design because in the new york market mjf he's not getting booed mjf is, was getting yeah. like half booze half cheers yeah. you know if it is they really smart mm-hmm. really smart if not they may have figured out how to get mjf booed pretty fantastic just cut the cut the screens in the studio and the, in yeah. just keep cutting it on and off in the in the arena what did you think of that MJF promo? I thought it was great. Uh, like I said, pretty funny him pushing Tony Schiavone down the stairs, uh, to pu- pushing him on the ramp. To get a boo. Yeah. To get a boo. Um, up next, you had uh, Pac retaining his uh, All-Atlantic Championship. Um, fantastic match. A lot of fun. 
it was yeah. a lot of fun, but the crowd settled down for this. The crowd settled down a, a little bit for this. Pac is, again, one of those dudes that he might be small, but you can see him from the nosebleeds. Pac, There's yeah. something about it. He's very impressive. Yeah, you know? big presence. Yeah, very huge impressive. presence. Um, Tony Storm, this is when you left, I believe. Yes, I left right when this match was started. 9-14. Yeah, I had I, 9-14. <laughs> Who won the bet, by the way? Uh, your wife. My wife. Yeah, won. Jess was like, I think it's gonna. We were, when we were talking in the bar, she was like, I think it's gonna be nine fourteen. I think, I think so. I was like, all right. Yeah, because she, she know, I, I melt down around that time. Even at home, that's when I go. I get into a little ball and I start moaning. <laughs> that's when you get <sighs> when you start putting on the uh, the alien stuff and dropping an LSD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much nine fourteen. Um, so at this point in our experience, you leave. You send me your ticket. I send you my ticket, yeah. I go, great. I said, use my ticket. I got, I got four great seats here. Use my ticket. Fantastic. So I'm going to interject the card with talking about what happened. Okay. This guy sends me his ticket. Thank you very much. Great. Right? Boom. We get, we get a little lost looking for 110 because we were like on the, uh, like way on the other side of where you were. Yes. Like up top, yeah. right? So we get down there. And I go to security guard. I was like, hey, listen, my buddy left. I got his ticket. Yeah, right you were here. so honest with him. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, great. I was like, cool. Where's the section? He's like, it's right there. Your seats are there. I was like, there's a couple of seats down in the front that are empty. You mind if we go down there? And the guy looked at me and went, yeah, dude, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Walked all the way down to the second row. <laughs> Sat in two seats. Right? Great. We're cheering. We're going nuts. Blah, blah, blah. The people who sat there came back. Right? No problem. Here you go. Yeah. We sat next to them on the staircase. Right? One dude was like, hey, guys, can you sit down? We were yeah. like, no problem. It was like an older guy. Yeah. Sit down, blah, blah, blah. Commercial happens. The older guy comes. We're standing. We're talking. The older guy comes up to us. He's like, hey, listen, I'm sorry for being brusque. But, you know, I couldn't see. You guys are very tall. And I paid a lot for these tickets. And then he started like asking us what we do for like, you know, like, like, so what do you do for what do you guys do? You know? And we, he was like, oh, great to meet you. My name's Ed. I've been in like, uh, I've been in packaging for 35 years. Great. Cool. Sit down. Uh, I don't, I feel like I shouldn't tell the rest of the story. Don't tell. Don't tell. <laughs> don't tell. Regardless. The Listen, we just know that it ends with you and Muda just spitting on it. Just hanging out, dude. Uh, this, we end up in seats that were pretty fantastic. Let's just say that. I'll leave, it, I'll leave it to the imagination. By hook or by crook, we charmed our way into a very awesome place in that arena. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes. And that's my story. If you want the rest of it, uh, join our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great story. Uh, it's a good story that I really can't tell on Was that air, you? But where? Was that you just now? Or was that outside? I think that was outside. Uh, let's continue with this card. Right. So I missed this match because of the whole thing. We the were whole doing. thing that was going on. The whole thing. Britt that Baker. Was going Britt on. Baker busted open, bleeding everywhere. But I did see um, Soraya, formerly Paige. known as Paige, come out. Huge pop. How do you feel about her? Um, I, I think she really changed her life. Mm -hmm. I think she had a series of terrible events. Uh, I'm I'm curious what she does. Because as of recently, she still wasn't clear to return. You think it's going to be, uh, at some point, Paige, well, Soraya versus Britt Baker? I think you could do something very unique with her. Turning on Tony uh, Storm? Yeah, absolutely. I think you could do something very unique with her. I, I You know, it, it is a shame because she really kicked off this whole women's wrestling movement in the United States. She really mm -hmm. was the catalyst. Her and AJ, really. Yeah. Right? AJ Lee. Yeah, AJ Styles was the catalyst <laughs> for, <laughs> for They're not the, the same Renaissance person. and women's wrestling. Um, hey man, hey man. Uh, I, I I I'm curious. Like I would I, I don't. When is the last time she wrestled? Right? How many years ago was this? Twenty <sighs> fifteen, right? Something it has like to be that, something right? like that. Twenty sixteen. It was because she went away and then came back, and then she she went away again. Well. You have to like page, page in my head is a weird timeline because she was quote unquote like pre the women's revolution. She was, yeah, she was, but you she know? she was, uh, you know, on TV especially like they brought her up and gave her the title. Yes, uh, 
That and, wasn't done. And she had the butterfly belt, right? And she had the butterfly belt. <laughs> yeah. what, what a horrendous piece of trash. Um, that belt was terrible. But I remember... Like, not, not Paige, the belt. The belt. The belt. I'm trying to remember what year it was, because I remember she had this insane match with Charlotte. That was completely unbelievable. Let's see. And then they think they brought her up. She she came up interrupting an AJ Lee promo, right? 2017. Her no. last televised match took place December 25th, uh, okay. 2017. On a house show, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, great asset. Very cool to have somebody like that in the company. You know, not only is she a name and a presence, but she brings how many years of experience coming from that family. Yeah. And, you know? and she's still very young. And... You know what? She's 30. People forget. They made a friggin' movie about her. Isn't that wild? But it's unfortunately, her career it came out at the worst time. Yeah. Yeah. Her career was, you know. A movie produced by The Rock. About her about her career. About her life and career. Yeah. How crazy is that? Yeah. And it was a pretty decent movie, too. Very fictional. It was, But yeah. Florence Pugh did a great job. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, Charlotte Match was 2015. Yeah. Okay. Charlotte Match was 2017 was the injury. Cool. Um, great. Cool, cool little moment, right? Yeah. Uh, and then your main event of Dynamite. You think she's wrestling? I think at some point she's probably going to wrestle. And if and if she doesn't, that's also cool. Yeah. You know? Do you think at any point in AEW there's going to be some kind of uh, GM authority? I don't know. I don't know if they should. You know? Like, I feel like there are moments yeah. that, like, it would explain a lot more. Mm -hmm. But... Then it becomes such like a trope in wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. The general manager, the the authority figure, is saying this match and this match is happening. I think we all know that, like Tony's the bookmaker, you yeah. know. Like I think everybody realizes that, so like he's the one doing the doing the matches. But I kind of I I do dig that there is no authority figure on that. But that's a very WWE thing now, you know. Like yes. it's it's the McMahon family. It's always been the McMahon family. Bischoff, I, the McMahons, like this was always a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Bischoff, the McMahons. I but I also think like. People rag on Tony Khan unnecessarily, but I think he's done a great job of keeping himself off camera. Yeah, listen, you know? I, I think people don't like. He comes out and he's screaming because like, he's excited. Like, you dude, know? like it's a shtick too. Like yeah. he gets it. He understands that he's acting wacky, and he, he it's part of the thing. It's part of the charm. Do you think people are like he should be bitter like Vern Gagne? <laughs> I, you know what I see. <laughs> I, I, I have to tell you though, Tony gets. Mm -hmm. A ridiculous amount of nonsense uh hate on the internet you know how i you know how he i does, know this yeah, yeah. i saw it he left a freaking comment yeah on a tweet of mine oh yeah right? dude oh my Let's, god i'm gonna talk about yeah this, please go on we'll go. like it, so and it was it was just a tweet of here we go basically what a beautiful photo that is right great photo what yeah. is what is that you got the iphone 14 what is what is that you what is it? I got, got a, that phone i got oh a, you got oh, that phone is that nokia 960 <laughs> uh so <laughs> i took this beautiful photo yeah of like dynamite is starting the pyro's going off i did the same thing last year yeah great photo so, uh really beautiful photo you know what tony commented on it he goes and he goes, it's a funny joke because he probably saw the Alba stuff, right? How yeah. John Alba and I, like mm -hmm. John was doing, we were doing this like same thing. He posted a bunch of like saying like, oh, I ran in, like I, I whatever. We were doing this whole lookalike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tony writes, there's a guy who works backstage for us. And yesterday I almost asked him, Andrew, how did you get back here before doing a double take and moving on? That's all he wrote. Yeah. You know, I sent him a nice message. I was like, it was a great show. He's, you know, whatever. And then I saw the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, on this look, poor this man's <laughs> I, I, on this poor man's timeline yeah, it's so ridiculous. okay just the replies to what he wrote to me uh -huh. a lot of who cares right oh boy uh who cares a lot of uh why you're a coward for releasing cm punk cm punk this this and this i was like guys holy like can this man just say something? Very pleasant online interaction. Right? Yeah, it's a nice, it's a funny, it's a funny uh, thing. And then I get the messages of like, well, we now know you're on that payroll. Ugh. You're on Tony's payroll. I have no problem <laughs> being on Tony's payroll. <laughs> I, I don't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. I don't care. I do this because I enjoy it. I say right. it all the time. Like, Rich and I do this because we love doing it. Right. I'm not, like, I don't care. Yeah. 
Not that I, I mean, I would, I wouldn't mind. It. I mean, if Tony uh, bought if Tony the podcast, wanted, and Tony, we, we were an AEW hey, podcast, I I'd, I'd pod. love that. Yeah, if Tony wanted to buy the podcast. If he was like, I want Matt Men. <laughs> All right, dude, whatever. Let's figure it out. Whatever. Can I still do it from 10 to 11 and then go to work? Right. Exactly. All right, Tony. But I, I, I just, I saw this and I'm like, this is, this is so crazy because never in a million years would any of these people yeah. approach Tony Khan or myself or anybody else with the words that they use. Right? Right. Nobody would do that. In real life. And if you did... You're going to get punched in the face. Right. Well, here's the thing also. Like, I guarantee you, if anybody ever saw this guy in real life who was one of these people that commented on it, they probably wouldn't recognize him because I feel like folks like this walk through the world with their eyes glued to their phone and shuffling their feet. Dude, like, what a, it, like, it's a simple engagement. He couldn't even leave. I, 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 I'm so turned off by social media, by the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I really am at, like, the heinousness of people. Like, I, I, Very I, I, don't, I don't engage. I don't get it as much. Yeah. But there are times it's like... I got a message from somebody like just the other day, like a, like a DM, and this person is like, "F you, yeah, you're a piece of garb, you're a piece of shit, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's me, <laughs> uh, you're you're disgusting, yeah, WWE rules or whatever the bullshit they wrote." That's my burner account. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> "What the fuck did I say?" Like I, I know. I like WWE. I like AEW. I like Ring of Honor. I like New Japan. I like fucking wrestling. I don't give a shit. Which is stuff we say on the show all the time. But nobody hears that. Nobody That's hears the problem. The, Everybody it, just sees like a pot. Like <laughs> they see me writing. <laughs> Had a great time uh, in AEW. Hysterical. And they're like, oh yeah, of course you did. This is the best one, right? Cash that check, Zarian. There are people. Yeah, I know. I, you know what? Give me the fucking checks. Yeah. Tony Khan, please support. The, be, become a Patreon member. Support Tony Khan. Become a Patreon member. Top tier. Top yeah, tier Patreon. Top tier. It's like ten bucks a month. Fund the show. Fund the show. We'll be we'll be Vince's ECW of podcasts. Like you're just funding the show. We're not even going to get guests. Just you know to do. We won't this. even talk about wrestling anymore. No. If you pay us not to talk about wrestling, <laughs> if you pay us, you know what, Tony Khan. Pay, Tony Khan pays me not to talk about wrestling. But you That's know what? what you know what? Like you see, you mentioned this a month ago. If we did a show about paint drying, it'll still be fucking fun yeah well i would have a blast <laughs> we could talk about benjamin moore we sherman, could talk about williams, sherman baby. williams my mother had a had a great insult uh about <laughs> one of my brother's terrible girlfriends once mm -hmm. and he she called and and you know my mother has that accent too right yeah yeah, yeah. she goes she goes huh she looks like a sherman williams bitch <laughs> she put on so much makeup on her face <laughs> that's funny that's pretty good. <laughs> I thought it was the funniest thing my mom has ever said. She referred to my brother's girlfriend as a Sherman Williams bit. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back back to the point. But it, yeah. you know what? But these guys, I think I I would I would think that at this point these people have thick skins, so it's like water yeah, off a duck's what, back. Though? Yeah, you know? but they, they're days. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're yeah. days of like, you know what? If you if you don't have that thick skin, yeah. it's fucking damaging. Do you get sad if somebody's like, "Hey, you stink"? Yeah. <laughs> I've been told I stink for twelve years, thirteen years. I don't give a shit. Does it make you mad when I get on my burner account and DM you that you're garbage? <laughs> <laughs> that bothers me. That bothers you know me. what? I don't even use a burner account. It's just me. <laughs> How dare you engage with Tony Khan? It's, See, I knew it. It's me knocking on your door and telling you you're garbage and then leaving. In person trolling yeah. is the new thing. I, I I had somebody wrote to me. They're like, yeah, would Vince ever engage with you on social uh, media? Okay. And I wrote, and you know what I wrote to him? I said, you don't know what I've engaged, who I've engaged with at WWE. Yeah, you don't know what dinners I've gone to. Yeah, you don't know what I eat for dinner. You don't know what I eat for dinner. <laughs> but truth be told, it's just you and them sitting around doing your best Andrew Dice impressions. Yeah, Nick <laughs> Khan does a great one, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> doing uh, doing the cigarette bit over and over again. All right, let's get back to the thing. Um, there was an old lady he, who lived in a shoe. Oh, oh. oh um, main event: John Moxley beating yeah. Daniel Bryan, uh, <laughs> Bryan Danielson, uh, in the finals of the AEW Tournament of Champions for the vacant uh, World Championship. They kept showing MJF, and it was pretty funny because from when we were sitting, he was right in front of us at the top of the arena, and just mugging the entire time yeah, like right. really like you could see his face from like a thousand feet away it's hysterical uh mox ended up winning with the bulldog choke danielson insisted on putting the title on him very very cool ending uh three-time champ cool promo after very nice everybody was so stoked in the arena I, when this happened i you have know? to tell you 
I was so bummed at this match. This is the first time in a very long time that I was so disappointed that somebody lost in wrestling. Yeah. I really want Danielson to get that title. I know, but I've wanted it since he went there. I because I'm a like listen man, I'm a big fan of his because that style Same of wrestling yeah. is everything I enjoy about wrestling. 100%. Like the perfect style. Yep. Is is that? Like yeah. I not listen, I love Hey man. He's not he was not a fan of me when I messaged him on MySpace like 20 years ago. Ooh, that's a, him I'm a fan. That's a story for another day. A story for another day. <laughs> I think we told that story on uh, Matt Man after. No, Dark we never ones. told that story. Yeah? We never told that okay. story. Well, those episodes are gone anyway, so it doesn't yeah. matter now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> MG Geek pull he put him on his hard drive. And then he put that hard drive in his yeah, you know what he does, right? I know what he does. <laughs> Where is he by the way? I don't know. Is he here? Get the camera on. Him. Are you here? Yeah, whatever. Um no. He's on a delay. Usually when you ask him if he's here, it takes... There he is. There, is. there he is. There, there he is. I just wanted to say hello. What is, it, what is he giving us the finger for? Terrible producer. I wish he, how does that you know what? Tony Khan would never tolerate that. How does his lens get so dirty? Dude, it's smudge. <laughs> Filthy. It really is. He has like a Vaseline uh, <laughs> thing on it. Uh, so You know what he does? You know, he's one of those guys that's like afraid that the camera's going to turn on and someone's going to see him. <laughs> With his pee pee out, and he's gonna get those, so what he those does, emails. So he 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 puts tape over it, but it's transparent tape. <laughs> it's like it's like the scotch tape that's like a little blurry. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great! Look at him; he has his pee pee out right now. <laughs> put it back in. He's don't, turtling. Don't put him on he's camera. turtling. Don't put him on camera. <laughs> don't put him on camera. Uh, uh, yeah. So I uh, I was so fucking disappointed, man. Like I appreciate. Listen, yes. great for Mox, right? Great, it was a great match. I get what they're doing. They have a plan. They're moving forward. Like. I don't ever get like that because like we view wrestling very differently. Like we view right, wrestling right, right. as like like Cody getting hurt was a, was a detriment. To oh, it. I was like, God, oh yeah. man, come on, yeah, you know. Yeah. But you watch it. I'm like, I want this guy to be the champion. I want him to get all the titles. I want Daniel to, to be on this this, you know. But they're telling a great story here where he just can't cut the mustard well i don't even think that's a story he's the dude who can turn around and say by the way losses don't matter for me no but i mean it <laughs> like, is telling you a story right he yeah. couldn't he couldn't get it done with kenny he couldn't do it with hangman he couldn't do it with danny Mox. garcia that danny garcia that first danny garcia the daniel match. garcia yeah. match yeah. he lost to jericho yeah you know that they him losing he's mm -hmm. one of these guys that it has to mean something when he loses yeah so it's not like The Rock losing, and then they're like, oh, it doesn't even matter that The Rock loses. It does matter when he loses. It'll happen to him. But it, the converse aspect of this whole thing is that uh, AEW has done a tremendous job of making John Moxley the absolute king of pro wrestling. No, he, uh, Matt, wrestler of the year? Right. He's my wrestler of the year. Absolutely. Th there's no question about it. Absolutely. Like, Roman, great, but Roman didn't do indies, you know, like, in my opinion. Roman Roman is the man yes. in the business. There's yes. no question. Like you could talk about it. some people say Okada. It's Roman. Roman is the blockbuster draw. Yeah. However, wrestler of the year, John Moxley. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And plus, it's like he he's a good crossover as far as wrestling fandom goes because he's a little bit of everything. He's a little yeah. You know, and he still gets those WWE guys. You right, know? right. You know, like he's a little bit of everything. And former WWE champion, former every you know, like he's. He's carving something. You so know? this this actually is bad for GCW because GCW has a career on the line match. That's right. <laughs> and do you want your world champion? Do you want your world champion, your AEW world champion, losing? Right. To 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 Nick Gage. Right. Right. Do you think there's going to be some kind of shenanigans? I don't know, man. I don't know what you do here. But Tony, I mean, listen, Tony does not think traditional wrestling booking. Tony thinks what's going to work. You know, it's mm -hmm. a very different philosophy. WWE is now shifting back into that of, uh -huh. of things that make sense. Uh, you, you don't well, have yeah. to. You, there, this whole like, well, you can't do this because of this. Like that, that a lot of that is, yeah. is going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they curse on TV last night uh, on Wednesday? I don't recall. D guys, do, do you recall any cursing? We were so in it. Everything was so loud and beautiful. We had a couple of drinks in us, you know. Like I, I feel like it was one Yo, of those, everything. I couldn't hear shit. Dollars for a beer. Yeah. No thanks. Okay. Uh, well, so, it was four. They were fourteen ninety nine. Fourteen ninety. Yeah, but at the tax. At the tax. Yeah, yeah. Um. What, what were we asking? What were we saying? 
I was I said the cursing the uh, Jade Cargill promo. Uh huh. Um, they did they did edit that. They did cut that out. The cut what did she say? Part, where she yeah, says, so cut interesting. The shit. They they did mm-hmm. edit it, so they are doing some editing on the uh, now for whatever reason. Oh, That's I got a I got a DM. Hold on. I got, I got a DM. <laughs> <laughs> your garbage. <laughs> hey, that's not your burner. That's your account. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so good. Um. So, where were we? Oh, here we go. Matt Men is all elite. They just made it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh. Yeah. So dynamite ends. Everybody's happy. Mox is the champ, right? Are you really the king of pro wrestling at this point? Fantastic. Great yeah. story. <laughs> Should we not talk about spoilers or just talk about the match? You know what? Let people already know the big spoiler, but the matches were great for Rampage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rampage. I'm, I'm curious. Two hour Rampage tonight. You're gonna get Sting and Darby Allen versus the House of Black. Uh, Golden Ticket Battle Royale. Yeah. Jade Cardgill. Uh, defends the TBS Championship against Diamante. You got Action Bronson and Hook. We left Kupano. right after that. Did you see Action Bronson? Like, awesome. How, fantastic. It? Okay. it was fantastic. Okay, good. Everybody went nuts. Did everybody... he rap? No, he didn't rap, but everybody in the... Oh, maybe he did. I, I went to the bathroom at some point, but he was in the ring. Uh, everybody went bananas for it. Like, hometown Listen, hero. Nobody else gives a shit, okay? We care, though. I think so. You We're know? into this. Which is kind good of funny. For good for that But guy. he got in shape. Big dude. Yeah, you know, got dude. in shape. Like, him and Hook make a great tag team. Hook is deceptively larger in person than on TV. Hook is... Yeah. Uh, Eddie Kingston, Sammy Guevara, Ray Phoenix, Jungle mm-hmm. Boy, Wardlow, and uh, the ROH TV champion, Samoa Joe, take on Tony Neese and Josh Woods. Powerhouse Hobbs takes on Ricky Starks. So I missed, I, I missed the Samoa Joe match because I got lost <laughs> going to the bathroom. Yes. Legit. Yes. I come back. Alex is like, yeah, this dude's awesome. And I was like, oh, I missed the Samoa Joe match. Guess what? Last year, same thing. Same thing happened. You missed the Samoa I Joe match. I missed the Samoa Joe match because yeah. I was on a concession line. A um, lot of fun. Concessions I, were better this year. Way better. Way better. Way better. Uh, I heard some people are complaining. I'm like, dude, mm-hmm. it was a thousand times better. The lines were way shorter. They yes. had mobile beer spots. Yes. They had uh, That was clutch. They had the chicken joint. Yes. Fungo. Fugo. Fuku. Fuku. Yeah. They had Fuku. They had a burger place. They, they had stuff happening, which was... Much more than last year. So la- so in preparation, like, you know, we had lunch and everything. And uh, I went to 7-Eleven and I bought a bunch of Kind Bars, right? Just like health snacks. I stuffed them into my pocket. Alex was like, what are you doing? And I was like, yo, we're going to get hungry in like two hours. We yeah. don't know what it's going to be like in there. And at one point, I was like, are you hungry? He's like, yeah. I was like, boom, whipped them out, ate them. Because I didn't, I didn't want to get like that pizza. No, no. You know, I haven't had proper pizza in ages, by the way. I'm dying for like a slice of beautiful pizza. Do you? Yeah, I haven't had pizza since. I can't even remember, dude. Hmm. I can't even remember the last time I had pizza. I'm dying. I shouldn't say that as a New Yorker, but I I are. may have pizza tonight, actually. Yeah, yeah. But here we are. Um, a lot of fun. Obviously, everybody has probably seen the major spoiler for Rampage. We're not going to say it on air. Uh, even though it's happening tonight, but I think you could gather who came out by the beginning of the show and what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, whole lot of fun. Uh, do you want to jump into NXT or no? Or do you want to go back up to... Hey, real quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, That Max, the Moxley uh, Danielson mm-hmm. Max uh, match, uh, apparently Dave gave it five and a half stars. The Moxley Danielson match, he gave it five and a half stars. Wow. Who's Dave? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you talking about, dude? I don't know. Some guy I just t- seen on the street yesterday. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, okay. It would be funny if it was some dude that lives near MG, and he's like, hey. No, my dude, friend Dave. My friend Dave. He gave him five and a half stars. Stars. All, All right. right. So, some news from yeah. AEW. <clears throat> this has been a very heavy AEW show. We still love WWE. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that. We, there's a lot happening tonight for WWE. We're going to find out who the bunny is. We are going to find out who the bunny is. <clears throat> the White Rabbit. The white rabbit. Uh, hey. So, Oi. so it's a bad one. It's. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be. Oi. Um. You think people would be disappointed if it is bad bunny? Nah, dude, that guy's mad popular. No, no, no. But like everybody wants it to be bright, obviously, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, imagine he comes out in the spooky gimmick. Oi. <laughs> that would be funny. Uh. So 
uh, Paige's theme song is zombified by Falling in Reverse, her boyfriend's band. Her boyfriend's Pretty band, Pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, but Baker apparently broke her nose during the four-way. Uh, Ruby Riot also needs surgery on a broken nose. Um, everybody's got broken noses. Uh, the winner of the golden ticket gets the title shot on October 18th. Uh, which is a Tuesday, Dynamite had to be moved that week because of the baseball. Um, not going to talk about the spoiler. <clears throat> Tony Khan said this week, the real crown jewel of wrestling, wrestling is the Northeast United States, not some BS overseas in Saudi Arabia. I know. I saw that. I, I saw that. You know what? Uh, a, a lot of people thought my crown jewel idea was great. Did I sell you that? No, can you repeat it? You said yeah. that on the Garrett show. Yeah, on right? the Garrett, on the that's what we call it now. <laughs> the yeah, show. the Garrett show. Uh, I was doing the Garrett show, and I, I said, you know, great piece of advice. Yeah, go to Jewel Avenue, put a fucking crown on Jewel on the on the sign, they, and now you got your crown jewel in Queens, and perfect. you do like a pan out. And you show, like, whatever, Queens. You show freaking Bodega, or you show, you know. <laughs> what was Garrett? Like, I don't know what you're talking about, because he's a Cali boy? No, no, no. I was very yeah. adamant on screaming and, and looking at the camera and demanding Tony do this. That's hysterical. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read the rating this week. I'm breaking Matman protocol. Dynamite rating, uh, 1,039,000. I did it. Ah! I did it. I'm this reading. This is how I get sucked back into the time war. I disappear. <laughs> like Marty McFly. Wow. I start disappear. You start fading. Andrew, you've been a photograph this entire time that uh, slowly fades. Um, Dynamite rating, 1,039,000 viewers. Uh, P18 to 49 rating, 0.35. Fifth week straight above 1 million. Look at that. Did I do good on that? You did very did good. read on numbers that. well. So, a lot of people are disappointed in these numbers mm. because the numbers are down compared to last week. However, you know what? I, I, as long as they're at that million mark, they're healthy. They're yes. healthy. They were fifth for the fifth straight week, they hit a million. So, Yes, I would. You know, I, I talk about the patterns, right? Six week pattern m means a lot. Yeah. Next week they have to keep it at a million because now you're showing that okay, you're out of the, you're getting out of this whatever it was. <laughs> right, right. Over the summer, you know, summer expect the ratings to go, but you know they were doing in the nines. It it doesn't really matter that fifty thousand viewers or the twenty five mm -hmm. or the thirty thousand viewers. It it, it it's semantics, right? right However. Right. Visually, it looks a lot better being at a million. Mm -hmm. uh, there is something to be said about being a show that gets a million live viewers. And it, it's shown growth. So, right. okay, stay at a million. Let's see you next week. Let's see what you could do next week. I do think you... it's going to be on the up. You know why? Mm. This is, um, it, well, I feel like it always is this time of year. Plus, they have the anniversary show coming up. You have the anniversary show coming up, uh, you know, potentially, possibly the Bucks returning is a big deal. Kenny, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, if they do return, if they are retired, I would imagine they are. But they're holding steady without these guys. You know, it's very interesting how, like, we talked a little bit about this where, you know what? It sucks that these dudes were not on the card. This is a, this was a big I, show. I, I, you know? I'm curious what the, what the, what the match was going to be at this show before the whole Suspension. Suspension. Because you would have had yeah. a trios match with Kenny and the Bucks. Sure. You would have had CM Punk defending the title against somebody. Possibly uh, MJF. Or Mox. Again. You know. Or Danielson. Yeah, or Danielson. Something. You could I, I don't even know if Mox and Danielson. No, Mox would have been gone. He would have been He would have been on vacation. Yeah. And so. Jericho also. Yeah. Right? Because they needed to pick up the slack for the I think absences. you would have had Jericho at the show. I think um Punk versus Daniel Bryan as the main event of Dynamite in New York would have been gangbusters. That would, yeah, absolutely. You know? But there has there has been reports, quote, well, should I say reports or should I quote Wade? Here. Report, yeah, yeah, Wade, yeah, Wade. Yeah, so Wade Keller, um, Pro Wrestling Torch, has said reports are coming out that CM Punk might not come back to AEW there might be some kind of contract buyout where Terrible. and he's banged up, you know, so he's already hurt. They might buy out his contract. Let the guy go. I don't know, man. Like, I want to see how this plays out, but it's wild to think that it's gotten to this point. And it seems like everybody now has kind of bitten their tongues and are taking a huge dump on this guy again. <sighs> Not Wade. I, mean, like, I, 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 
you know, why, why ruin what you got going? You know, like, mm-hmm. I, I don't understand that. He, he really, listen, this was his moment, right? This was Punk's moment to, to build it and to, mm-hmm. to do whatever he was doing and, and to be a big star again for in wrestling and to kind of erase that terrible uh, WWE experience he had and that UFC experience he had. He had, uh, he had an opportunity. And didn't happen. Very, you know, I I feel like I at this point because the story hasn't the story's not over yet. I I have very mixed as a fan. I have very mixed feelings about this. You know, they're not yeah. like hardcore feelings, but they are mixed feelings. You know, where it's like, like you said, why couldn't the guy just leave well enough alone? You know. Also, why you can't. hear things of like, you didn't hear one iota of backstage angst until this dude showed up. Fascinating, right? Right. And like, he showed up. Cody left. Right. Yeah. It's very interesting. So I don't know. Like I want to see how this plays out. Also, the guy probably doesn't need the money. He was doing it for the love. Maybe the love got to him, the obsession got to him, and he just lost it. You know, the guy also has been known as not having a filter, right? Yeah. Who knows? Uh what would your reaction be if the contract gets bought out? Uh it would be I would be disappointed. Yeah. I would be disappointed that that's this is the outcome. But, you know, Tony has to Tony has to run a business and, you know, if he is that much of a distraction, he's that much of a of a of a detriment to the company, you got to mm-hmm. you got to figure out something. Do you think it would be a wise move if they do that to at least let him show up on TV at one point? No, no. And no. say, "Hey, no. You know, no, that that's it. You're not coming." If hey. that, if that's that's the end, like it's it's over. Hey, I'm sorry I let every one of the fans down. Yeah, because that that's who really got let down. Yes. Forget about the Bucks and Tony and, right. and uh, I mean you know, the people are, are invested in this guy. They really are. Right. And, you know, you had the WWE thing happen, and you said, you know what? Poor guy. He really dealt a lot, dealt with a lot, which he mm-hmm. did. Right. Which, right. you know, compassion. He goes to UFC, does the thing he wanted to do. People are still saying, like, you know what? Good for him. He's living. Absolutely. He's doing what he wants to do. Absolutely. He goes to AEW, and this is the big moment. This is his ba- return back to wrestling after seven years, and look yeah. how it ends. Yeah. Terribly. I mean, we're not privy to any of these backstage conversations, you know, but I feel like, again, the we said we said this on Tuesday and, we're, and like today we're both in agreement that what a shame for the fans, you know, that's who suffers. That's who suffers because you want these in an ideal world. You want these guys to put their differences aside and not be catty millionaires about yeah. whatever drama is happening, you know? And then at the end of the day, it's almost like you almost kind of want to be a little cynical and jaded, you know, because wrestling doesn't love you back. You know wrestling, what I mean? Yeah. It was very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of psychology there. Yeah, there's a tons. whole lot of sociology as well. <laughs> always, always <laughs> sociology. Uh, you want to jump into NXT news and highlights? Yeah, let's do that quickly. Uh, Shawn Michaels is now apparently an onstage character, uh, onscreen character for NXT. He stripped Solo Sokoa of the North American Championship. But she, he defended the title on, on SmackDown, so right. that was a last-minute decision. Right. Do you think it's because they're just going to bring the guy up to be with Roman? Yeah, I mean... Super it, bloodline? Yeah, yeah, but I would have liked him to have the title there. Um, main event had uh, J.D. McDonough beat Tyler Bate to become the number one contender. After the match... The Dragonov came out to face off with Braun Breaker. So I like that how they're feeding Braun all these really respected guys. Right. Like wrestling wise, you know? Doing, doing the, doing the Roman. Job. Doing the Roman. Dude, yeah. Uh very interesting. Do you think uh do you think he'll go far with the Triple H regime, Braun Breaker? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because mm-hmm. uh, he look at him. You know? Yeah. I, they they are trying to they are gonna make him. 100% they're going to make this guy. Plus, Ilya never lost the UK title. He vacated it because he was injured. Mm-hmm. So that, that's going to be a fun match. That's yeah. going to be a hard-hitting match. I like Dragunov. I think uh, I think now with Triple H more in charge of stuff, he's going to go a little further than he may have. I, I, I How do you feel about NXT now? I'm coming around. I'm coming back around to it a little bit. I still am like men's a men's. Yeah. You know? I kind of want to see what happens now with like... You know, the folks that don't renew their AEW contracts, you know, are you going to see them end up in NXT? Like, you know. Yeah. 
Well, maybe maybe you do that, right? Yeah. Kind of like the Ring of Honor stuff from yeah. a few years ago. Um, yeah. NXT did a 688, 688,000 viewers. Raw fell to 1.59 million. Mm. It did not do well against two football games. Yeah, dude. It did not do well against two football games. FTR will defend the IWGP tag titles against Aussie Open at the Royal Quest in London on October 1st. And Kushida was diagnosed with hand, foot, mouth disease. That's awesome. It's a baby disease, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he's got a couple of kids there, so that's probably why. No, I think it's touching the mat. I believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. I believe uh, that's also called Koksaki disease. Koksaki, yeah. Yeah. All right. Koksaki. Koksaki and Kawasaki, two very different diseases. <laughs> One is very deadly. Yeah. Um, do you want to do questions? Uh, yeah, let's there, do right? it. Guys, get your questions ready. Um, we got a few super chats here. We're going to answer those first. Uh, you know the deal. If you want your question answered ahead of the pack, feel free to super chat us any amount. It doesn't matter. Um, you could be a Tony Khan and super chat us $10,000. $10 million. <laughs> $10 million right now. It's, it's shooting for the stars. Uh, but we're going to answer some questions. Get your questions ready in the chat. Uh, our producers, Jonathan or MG Geek, will add them, and we will address them as... I think he fell asleep, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's a cadaver he's just sitting there he's a cadaver mg cadaver mg cadaver all right let's see here Oop. let's go this is a uh, five dollar super chat from michael reeden hello to the boys in mg i forgot it was friday until i got the Yo. notification you were live enjoy the fall weekend thank you michael it is very crisp outside did you it leave the house very crisp yeah wow. i had to take I, I took the puppy did you see the puppy uh, where is the puppy he's in his uh he's in his little crate yeah his big crate He's Italian, right? Greek. From Italy? Oh. Greek from Greece. Okay. Nico. Wow. Elado, Nico. <laughs> uh, this is another five bucks from Kyle Masters. Boys, hope you both are doing great. Have a good show. Thank you. Uh, this is from... Oh, Kyle. Thank you. Kyle, always there for us. Always there. Kyle Masters. He sent another one. I'm going to get to it in a minute. Yeah. Um, this is from Ryan Martins. If you had to... Ten bucks. Thank you, Ryan. If you had to guess... Does WWE reveal who's involved with this White Rabbit stuff tonight, or do we get another tease and they continue to stretch it out? I personally oh. think it's multiple people. Interesting. Ooh, it's the hacker. It's the hacker. What if it's Mustafa Ali? This is his new gimmick now. That would be cool. It's... Dude, he looks great, by the way, yeah. Ali. Yeah. Have you seen his yeah. new look? Yeah, he looks good. Great with the braids. He looks fantastic. A million bucks. It's the hacker. It's the higher power. It's the shock master. It's everybody I would love to one. Can you imagine if WWE did a whole thing about the higher power and <sighs> it wasn't Vince? Right? Like you fools thought it was Vince McMahon this mm -hmm. whole time. And it's the sinister minister. It's the sinister minister. <laughs> you know what? I would love the sinister minister to be the higher power. What a fantastic character, right? What a great character. I want great. him on the show. I want you to start dressing like the sinister minister. Okay. I, I think Jess, red I think you could pull off red very well. I I, I sent Jess a picture mm -hmm. and I said if I could honestly dress a certain way, yeah. right? Every day. And you say, okay, this is what you're going to wear, but you can pick anything and nobody's going to find it absurd. They're just going to find it like, wow. And nobody would make fun of you. They're going to find it, wow. They're not, <laughs> yeah. no, nobody would dare. Yeah, yeah, there are yeah. two options. One, Go ahead. one, always, forever, the dictator military garb. Oh, yeah. Like a Gaddafi. Okay. Right? Like a Gaddafi. <laughs> like, 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 forget about the heinous acts against his people. The, the look. Like Baba Tunde. Yes. Okay. Okay. I want to, I, I like that look very, I don't want to have any, anything. I just want to, I, I want to dress like a dictator. So Michael Jackson, basically. With the I want to dress like Michael Jackson with the tassels. With the yes. epaulets and yeah. all, the whole nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But less like, less like socks and the hand movement. Okay. But more like, oh, okay. He could be a little scary or mm -hmm. this is what I want to do. I want to dress up like a vampire. Like a goth, like a goth person, like or a, like like a like 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 a, Bella Lugosi Dracula, like in the shadows. What we do in the shadows, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. A, what's his name? Uh, Nandor, like Nandor. <laughs> I want to dress up like Nandor. You know what? I think you can pull that off too. You can pull it off. I'd probably dress like a swashbuckler. Yeah. If yeah, if no With if, a patch, if, no patch. If nobody like could say anything about it, poofy shirt, big big old scabbard. Yeah. You know, high boots, yeah. puffy pants. I I, I do want to mm. dress up like a vampire. I'm very into yeah. vampirism. Uh, like I don't, I don't follow. Like I don't follow it, but I'm like, all right, I get what you're doing. Like I think more people should dress up like vampires. If you were in, if you cloaks, were, if yes, I agree with that. I like that look too. If you were a adult in the mid '90s, yeah, would you have been going to? Would would sapphires be a vampire club? Would it have been a goth club? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you do goth night at sapphires? 
God, it, yeah. well, we do sometimes. Do you really? Yeah, some mm-hmm. of the girl what they wear. Okay. Okay. You should do a goth blowout at Sapphires. Just blood baths. And then, yeah, from like, like Blade. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then me and you can dress like weird vampires. Yeah, I just want to be like, and I want my hands always like this. <laughs> but like, they're like that it, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go to shake my hand. Watch. That, that's how you, that's how, uh, uh, nice it's to meet very, you. It's very nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my club. That's how you drive though, right? <laughs> All right. Someone needs to make that into a, into a uh, gif now. I have the dab. It's my vampire. Ready? Yeah. Ready? <sighs> Look. Oh, oh, You're gonna fall backwards. <laughs> what, oh, hello. What are you saying to me? <laughs> uh, what did you say to me? Did we answer his question? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> The uh, do you think the white rabbit's going to be oh. revealed tonight, or is it multiple people? Did Rowan get signed to AW? I don't know. I don't remember. Like Eric Redbeard, because he. I don't know if he signed. I think he appeared. Okay. Uh, I I think I, I definitely think it's bring that bad boy back I'm with gonna... with Bray Wyatt. I think you do a new crew. Yeah. What if Bray and you do? Um, I don't know. But what is his gimmick now? Do you think it will have some kind of spooky tinge to it if it is Bray? And I I want to say it's an Alice in Wonderland thing. Where it's, he's the Mad Hatter. He could be the Mad but Hatter. He could is, be the Cheshire Cat. But, but wait, is Alexa Bliss Alice? Because remember, the lights flickered for her. If she came out as an Alice in Wonderland and you had Bray as some kind of effed up looking Mad Hatter or March Hare or whatever, whew, man. I'm into it. Yeah. I, I Listen, I think he's very talented and he could do a lot. Now, I, I, I believe we will get the reveal this week. Tonight. Beca- tonight, because of all the positive uh, play AEW got. Okay. With, you know, having a 13,000 person, $1 million gate show. A lot of this is optics. A lot of this is strategic. Yeah. Uh, they want to go into uh, whatever they're doing right now. They're hot. So you got to keep going. You yeah. got to keep the momentum. I think it's a good move if they un- unveil it now. Whether he appears in, in the arena or on TV, we're going we're gonna to get a reveal of some sort. Yeah. I like the multiple people aspect yeah, of it that's... you know because you can you can bring back guys who were bounced from the company to a certain regard you could do like some kind of like wyatt family reunion with rowan and Strowman and bray that's a good trio you know like three big gnarly dudes that's a visual yeah right there you know all right we got a don 99 here from the nerd guru thank Yo, you thank that's you. his real name yeah uh, hey Andrew, pleasure meeting you at Grand Slam. You rule. Oh, dude, thank you. That was a gl- that was he was one of the good ones. He's the one that did not spit on me. He's the one that kissed your hand, right? He's the one that kissed my hand and goes on chante. Uh, this is another one from Kyle Masters. Hashtag Ask Matt Man Andrew. How did it feel being backstage and fooling Tony Khan? Dude, I fooled him good. I put on that AEW shirt. I've been working there for six months. He has no clue. He just walks by. He's like, aren't don't you look like Andrew Zarin? He walks away. I fooled him good. I fooled him goods. Uh, this is from. I got you, Tony. I, Anthony. 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 You call him Anthony? I just call him Anthony. I just scream it across. I'm like, Anthony. Anthony. Get in the house. It's me, Andrew. This is my real voice. Hey, it's me. This is my real voice. <laughs> Anthony. Hysterical. Very uh, hysterical. Badger 3000, friend of the show. Tony Kanakis. Let's make him Greek. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? That would be hysterical. You know what he does for a living? Makes baklava. Yeah, that's all he does. The best baklava in town. He works at Mediterranean Foods and he, cranks up yeah, that baklava all day. Yeah, he's at Mediterranean Foods. That, yeah, to, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Guys, I can't be at the EVP meeting. I got to crank out this baklava. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to get the finer, the finer filo sheets. These are too thick. Anthony. He works with his dad. He owns the business. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like perfect. It works great. Smokes Marlboro Lights all day. With the thing, this thing, that thing, it's more the mu- same mustache though, huh? Same mustache. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Greek guy pulls that off too, but he uh, he's got to pull the mustache off. Tony Kanakis. Him. Yeah. <laughs> the best wrestling promoter. Uh, <laughs> uh, four ninety nine. Back to three thousand. You guys liking the love that Sheamus has been getting ever since his UK match with Walter? Yeah, man. Yeah, he deserves it. He works hard. I think so. Some people are poo-pooing on him. I'm like, can you imagine this guy's getting cheered? He's having a good time out there, and you're like, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I disagree with a lot of those sentiments, too. I feel like it, you, know, it's, you didn't write it. 
It's fiction. Who cares? Who, Who cares? cares about just you, enjoy it. you dumb dumb? Just, <laughs> just either. I don't like Seamus. He he hits people hard. Don't comment on it unless it's something positive. You know, I feel like there's too much. We we talk about this like every single episode. There's too much internets. Too much internets, dude. But we're all up in the internet. Yeah. Uh, we're the internet. This is a super chat from Shreya Hashemi. Scissor me, daddyo. If you yeah. had Tony Khan's ear, what advice would you give him on Ring of Honor? Um, funny story. Didn't you win? Tony Khan's ear in a box at an auction. Yeah, the auction. I won it with Brent Baker's boots. <laughs> yeah, you got his ear. Um, yeah. What, what advice would you give Tony Khan on Ring of Honor? Advice is the key word here. <laughs> I, I would. I, I honestly. I, I, I get a good TV deal. You know. I. I, I don't yeah. know. I, I. I don't know what the. I think the advice will come. Like I could come up with something. I could be like, okay, I could see them doing this, or they should. Like in my opinion, what the fuck do I know? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Uh, I, I think it's figure out the TV deal, dude. But I think the Jericho move is a smart move. It brings eyeballs to Ring of Honor. It also has prestige to the title. Chris Jericho could say that he won another world title. Uh, he won the Ring of Honor world title. It's a nice yeah. little honor thing, you know, because a lot of that stuff. He was a big advocate for those guys. If, it, yep. if the Chris yep. Jericho's didn't do what they mm. did, then I don't know if the Ring of Honors would exist. Absolutely, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that in play. There's tons of that in play. So yeah, um, I would say I cannot give him advice because I don't know what the plan is. Shemi, that's a great question, though. I would say make it cool. Make it cool. Make it yeah. cool. You know, make it as cool as possible. I think we need more cool wrestling, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Right, we just got a twenty dollars super chat from Joel. Yo, Joel, thank you, man. Thank you, Joel. Uh, what are your top picks to win the twenty twenty three Royal Rumble under Triple H, both men and women? I'm going to go with Cody. Yes, absolutely. And for the women, too early to tell. Ronda. Yeah. No, didn't she win last year? Yeah, she won. Uh, she said she won, and I think there was an interview with her where she said she didn't like it or some shit like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, she was the internet for a split second. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, Alexa don't Bliss. Know. Alexa? Yeah. Mm, I don't think so. Or you think a surprise entry? Because that's like the that that's a good emphatic WrestleMania. Match. I don't know. I, I I don't know the women. Has Becky won? Hey, Becky? Yeah, maybe. Bianca has Bianca won. Bianca's not, yeah, she won. A returning Sasha Banks. That'd be a good pick. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Okay. All right, maybe her. Uh let's Great see. question. Yeah, really good question. There's another one from Ryan Martins here. Thanks, bud. What percentage odds would you give Bray returning to WWE? Do you think it's a done deal? This is I, I don't know anything in inside about this. Like I really everybody's been very quiet and nobody knows. Let me just tell you that. If you see a report saying that they know that Bray's debuting. Uh, I'm going to tell you they don't, and they're taking a very intelligent guess. Uh, I would, I am leaning towards Bray. Yeah. Uh, would I be disappointed if it's not? Probably, if it's a crappy idea. Mm -hmm. But I'm, uh, you're leaning towards Bray too, right? I'm leaning towards Bray. Would you be upset if it was Mr. Gonzo? I love it. <laughs> he's he's the white rabbit. <laughs> hey. Well, because we call him the White Rabbit because he likes to do some choppy choppy on his phone, if you know what I mean. Choppy choppy. <laughs> choppy choppy on his phone. Uh, this is from Safet. Hey, Andrew, did you see Law & Order's three-hour crossover event last night? I did not see Law & Order's three-hour <laughs> crossover event last night because I was in a, at, at, at the New York Country Club. Yeah. I am so tired. How long did the game go? Dude, it was 18 holes. You did 18? I didn't do 18. Yeah. I did like eight or 11 i've ne I've, I've never i've gone to the driving range a bunch. yeah i've never played golf I, I, this is the this is one of the first times i played on like like this kind of golf like a green yeah with the cat with caddies with and caddies like with the with the carts yeah. and everything yeah did you have fun at least i i gotta tell you um i always thought golf was stupid really okay? i thought golf was huh. ridiculous i i understood why it's important for like business meetings and things like that uh i just never got it as a sport mm -hmm. until I fucking hit that ball. Like I smashed it. Yeah. It radiates through you. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I get it now. I get it. And I was and I was doing righty. Really? Because I then nobody had lefty clubs. Yeah. I didn't have clubs. So yeah. I was I was using uh Mike's or my, my buddy Jonas's clubs. And 
like once you figure it out, like you could position it and it could go a certain way. It, yeah. It's it's a it's like a weird. I don't know, man. Like I, I saw, I opened it. I was like, I get it. Now I get it. I'll never question why people mm-hmm. like it. Like people would say, like, oh, golf is stupid. Like I'll never be able to question it now because I get it. I get the 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 rush. Yeah, interesting. I'm I'm a switch hitter with golf clubs and baseball. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. This is Baller Club guy, friend of the show. Yeah. TGIF, my Matt TGIF, man. TGIF, baby. Just bought tickets for full gear for my girlfriend, my parents, and myself. Full Gear will be my dad's first wrestling show in about six years. How should I explain an AEW show to him? I would. I. That's a great question. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it's there's not a lot of downtime with the show. You know, it's like it, it's boom, boom, boom. It's boom, boom, boom. I would say bring merch money. Yeah, buy some stuff. They did a great job with the merch at the show. Oh, the New York City ones? Um, no, no, I'm saying like where they had the merch set up. I didn't see it. It was outside. They had a whole building. Oh, yeah, they did the Mojo, the, uh, the, the, the restaurant. They put the merch. That's where they did the auction last year. Okay, very cool. Yeah, well, good job with that. This is from Nap528. Does AEW need to improve the booking of their women's division? It's real stale, gets little TV time, and feels unimportant. Um, other than Britt Baker, Britt Baker's a big star, yeah. right? You got Britt Baker. Tony you got You got, uh, you got um, uh, Jade, Yeah, right? Yeah, Those yeah. are big presents. After that, it's it's a supporting cast. And I know yeah. they're trying to do it with Tony now. I think I think Paige coming in, Soraya coming in. Yes. I think that's going to add to it. But like someone like Athena came in, and it didn't really do much. She's a great hand, but I think Athena needs to get a little bit more, you mm-hmm. know, TV time and do something. I think it's, it's it's a matter of, you know, what they have in their abilities. You know, you could talk about building the mm-hmm. women's division all you want, but look at what they've done with Jade. Jade is a great example of taking someone that does not have the in-ring experience that some other people do, but they've created this mm-hmm. great uh, character. So, yeah, I, I think it's, it's learning, you know, they... WWE has the advantage here. The WWE women's division is so stacked, and they've 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 been building it for almost a decade now. AEW's yeah. been doing this for three years. Right, right. Uh, I'm gonna cut them some slack on building the women's division because they got to build the men's also. Baby steps. It's baby steps, and you know, unfortunately, I would love for there to be parallel booking, and I love the same amount of attention to be put on the men's division as there there is on the women's division. But there's Absolutely. money involved. Yeah, you know, the reality is this is more of a male centric sport still. And majority of the the ad revenue is male driven. The yep. fan base is male driven, so you're gonna have more attention on that. And they got they got issues on that side. Look at how long it took WWE to get to the women's revolution, right? I, I mean, ages. Uh, it, 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 it they attempted to make it work from 1984 on mm. in some capacity. They tried it right. again in the 90s. It didn't work. They did the Divas era. That sucked. They yeah. did the Sable era, the Babe era. That that was crazy. Yeah. That was terrible wrestling. Wild, yeah. So Braun Pain, we're we're a long way from Braun like, Pain's matches. You know, you look at what they did, and they went for, in twenty years. It took them twenty years to go from Braun Pain's Pain, 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 Pain matches to what we have today. Yeah, which is a good thing. I think you know it's still growing. There's growing pains. Um, I ah, puppies. I yeah. mean, we 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 went from that. <laughs> We had this lunatic old man just screaming old titties constantly. <laughs> he would start salivating, shaking uncontrollably. Yeah. It's fucking shameful. <laughs> Imagine if there was no filter on that microphone. He, that, but that's what it was. He would have been cursing his head off, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, you yeah. oh, know? Wrestling is bonkers. Dude. Wrestling is so nuts. So... Yeah, it's it's tough. Also, WWE has cornered their market on making their female stars look like Hollywood stars, right? Their wardrobe and presentation is bar none the best in female yeah. sports yeah. entertainment. Yeah. You know? As much as I love the AEW roster, but I feel like that that big that bigness isn't there yet you know like when you see bianca belair come out with the song and the oh hair, it's a big thing it's There's a the, huge thing when you, you see know, becky doing, come out you know football games the wwe guys are on football again it's it, it's brain recognition perception it, it, it's, it's market uh it, it's saturating the market with your yeah. talent it's again brand perception is mm-hmm. a big part of this so you know 
when Chris Jarko does meeting, when Chris Jarko's doing radio appearances mm-hmm. or he's doing TV shows, these guys don't see him as like the AEW world champion. They saw him as, right. you know, Chris Jarko from WWE that's doing this other thing. Right. It takes time. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, this is another one from Kyle Masters here. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Any truth to the Soraya not fully cleared rumors? Apologies if this was already said. I, 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 be- I heard the same thing mm-hmm. that she was not fully cleared yet, but there was an expectation that she would, she will be. Um, mm-hmm. so I don't know. I, I have no idea. Uh, let's go. This is a good question. I like, this is a fun one. You ready? This is from the Shadow Ranger. Hashtag ask Matt Man. What wrestler in full gimmick Full gimmick, I'm assuming, meaning their character. Yeah. Would you most trust oh, to babysit okay. your kids for Firefly a weekend? Firefly Funhouse, Barry Wyatt. For a week. Yeah. Yeah, my kids love him. I would go classic Hogan. Oh. Demandman's Hogan. Like, he'd oh. be a great babysitter. And you know what? You'd come back home to a Jack baby. Oh, man. Can you... <laughs> uh, uh, macho Man babysitting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I fed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make sure you got all the milk from the breast pump. You know what? He would be stopped lactating. You know what I would love? Uh, okay. TV show. <laughs> that one broke Gonzo. <laughs> he has to keep his chin on. You know his head detaches? Did you know that? Know. He could take it, dude. It's the wildest thing. He has one 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 USB cable. Mm-hmm. It's just like that's all it is. Yeah. So like he could take it off and put it out, and all you see is a cable. We found uh Mr. Gonzo in a Castlevania dungeon, by the way. <laughs> He was like, he was, he was haunting the dungeon and then he did the head, he took his head off and, and, then, and then he was like, you know, guys, could I help produce your podcast? And we were like, uh, sure. Are you allowed to leave? Or this show is like, only for me and Rich. Okay. Oh yeah. It's all these stupid jokes. I hope you guys get them because we get such a kick out of these stupid little jokes. Uh, I who think... would I trust? You know what? I would love there to be. Bruce Beefcake, Macho Man Randy Savage, and Hulk Hogan babysitting my children. I wouldn't want the scissors around my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want that. I don't want that shit happening. <laughs> like, that guy used to like pump the uh, shit out of those scissors, man. Uh, give me, give, hold on. Let me think of another Classic one. Classic Hogan's my I don't want one. Austin. I don't want Austin. Uh, <laughs> Get that baby out of here. Uh, Dwayne would be too good at it. You think so? Cena would take it too serious. I need, I need yeah, 1980s right. insane. Iron Sheik. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know who'd be amazing? I think as a babysitter, no. Farouk. Farouk would be a yeah, great straight baby. up. No, 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 not Ron Simmons. Farouk. Farouk. Yeah, Farouk, Farouk would be a great babysitter. Straight like acolytes, like like yeah. um, APA Farouk. APA Farouk. Okay. Absolutely. Um, how about the Undertaker? Mm, no, no, because that the which version of the Undertaker? American Sergeant, Badass. American Badass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sergeant Slaughter. Nah. Sergeant Slaughter is another good one. Uh. Mang, this is how yeah. about Mang in gimmick? In, in gimmick. gimmick, nah, too too scary, too scary. I'm gonna, I like Hogan and Randy. Hogan, Randy, and Macho is a good one. I like Hogan. Hogan, I'm gonna go with. Yeah, a baby, baby, huh? Baby, what's that? Macho Man doesn't know what a baby is. He's never seen one before. He's looking at it like, oh. he's like analyzing. You can see it in his eyes. A baby, what's that? What are we doing? What's that, Andrew Zarian? <laughs> oh my god macho man macho man randy savage babysitting oh so good uh-huh. i went on arsenio hall <laughs> i'm not a racist why did he say that randomly uh he didn't say it randomly arsenio asked him a question and this man i believe was dressed like a cow at, <laughs> the, at that point i think he had his cow cosplay on uh-huh. uh with the cowboy hat and everything not a racist and uh, i think arsenio asked him about fans or something and he was like the macho man appeals to everybody, race, creed, or color. I'm not a racist. And just blurted that out. Which was, you know, good to know. And this is pre-canceled culture. You know, he got ahead of it. You want to move on? Did you just get a disturbing email? Sometimes when you look down, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> lawyers are emailing me. Uh, this is from BC Knight. My lawyer was trash last night. And it makes me <laughs> second guess the fact that he's my lawyer. <laughs> if you could pick any gimmick in gimmick... A wrestler to represent you in court, who would it be? Oh man, in gimmick wrestler to represent me, Austin. Yeah, <laughs> my client is not guilty. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is again BC Night. I, I still don't know what this is. I asked my wife. She said it's for when she does her Etsy orders. It's for kneading the. Uh, I don't believe her though. 
I think you put that on your uh, your little your uh, your yeah. There you go. Can you do the rest of the show? Like this yeah, is yeah, like, yeah. this is gonna become like your new like uh, like car like Karnak gimmick like uh, Johnny Carson. This is Karnak gimmick. Yeah. Can you do a Johnny Carson voice? Uh, I could do a Karnak. Uh, <laughs> here we go. With Susan Sarandon and a baby. That's my that's my things that Macho Man is unfamiliar with. A baby. <laughs> What's that? Baby, stop saying Luigi. You got your whole life ahead of you. <laughs> the best fucking bit. Uh, BC Knight asks if Peacock loses WWE streaming rights, which streaming service would, uh, which streaming sandwich would be the perfect home for it? <sighs> what, what else exists? Paramount. I mean, Peacock wouldn't lose it because they're tied to them. Fox doesn't right. really have a good one. Uh. I mean, listen, here's the thing, right? That that Comcast, that that potential interest of Comcast into Discovery Warner. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I guess I guess HBO, whatever that thing would be. I, I, I don't know. That's a great question. I don't think they really have too many options right now because everybody's consolidating. <laughs> Paramount Plus, but Paramount. Uh, it, Peacock, no sports. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, Bachelor three thousand dollar ninety nine. Akeem would represent me in court. He says, "Oh, so good. Oh yeah, cool Akeem. Could Akeem, could you get Doing away this? with the Akeem gimmick? Uh, you know what? <laughs> now me me me. Oh, as, you can... as a as a as a white person. Yes, we'll say yes. Now I'm gonna leave the determination to others. If if you guys go on YouTube and check out the origin of Akeem, um." It's wild where they go to it like never happen, dude. they it, go it, to like because he was one man gang. They go to the, they gang, go yeah. to gang territory. Is that how they did it? Remember, and it was like slick. Yeah, and, I know it was slick. And he they go to gang territory, but out comes like Akeem, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh man! And uh, I forgot what like did he get bumped on the head? What was the? Can I, does anybody remember? Did, I hope he got. But I love the bump on the head. Mm-hmm. We need more bump on the heads because it explains a lot, right? It's such a simple explanation. Did, was there backlash for Akeem when it happened? I don't remember because I was a child. I feel like it was... I'm going to go out on a limb here. I feel like because it was, what, like early 90s, late 80s? Late 80s, early 90s, yeah. I think there was like that pocket in time where you could oddly get away with something like that as long as it wasn't racist. And I don't think it was a racist gimmick. I don't remember I just think, much of it. I just think they were like... Yo, like, let's do this. So what do they tell him? They're like, okay, listen, Akeem, you're going to be a cool black dude now. Right. And he was probably like, fuck yeah. Yeah. I would would be like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, You know, you don't get that opportunity too often. No. No, (laughs) never. I I don't remember if if anybody. So Bachelor goes, Akeem was pretty popular in the South because of his time as one man gang when he lived in Louisiana. He lived in Louisiana. There we go. All right, man. Listen, whatever. You know, you know what gimmick I always found racist? Saba Simba. Saba Simba's racist. Saba Simba's very racist. Because it's Tony Atlas. Right. And they, they fucking put a thing on him and they're like, okay, now you're like a, a, a tribesman. Now you're this guy, you know. But Akeem, yeah, Akeem, there's like that weird pocket of like wrestling history where a lot of stuff you can't get away. I feel like you can't get away with most of anything done in the 90s. You know, like, um, like Val Venus you probably couldn't get away with now. I saw a lot of Val Venuses yesterday at that golf course. I'm sure you did, you. but they're also not on national television. Do you know what I want other more? people? I want this in wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want that. Well, could you? I think you can get away with a Rick Rude now. Well, MJF does that, right? You fat people in the crowd, and yeah, you know, but he's not like wiggling his hips and blowing kisses at the ladies. Yeah, dude, you know? I want that. What, did he, what did he call them? Uh, hog something? Hogs? Sweat hogs. Sweat hogs, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or is that from uh, Welcome Back, Hotter? Welcome Back, Hot Hair. <laughs> uh, uh, Harlem Heat, wh- when they had the shackles. I don't know if oh, Sherry came out. No, it wasn't no. Sherry with them with the shackles. They came out. Was it Colonel Parker? Wasn't that the idea? Oh, Jesus. You know what? That's a no-no. Yeah, that's a no. big no-no. No, no, no. Mm-mm. Can't do it. Too much. Too much. Wild. Uh, we got another super chat here uh, from Joel Arias. Uh, yeah. MG, could you add that to... Okay, where do you see AEW and WWE next summer? Any big returns go. left? Got it. Okay. Um, I got like five minutes. I got. Can you drop me off at the train? Sure. I'm going to take the 12 o'clock. Um, next summer, I would say co- you're going to see Cody as champion next summer. For sure. 
Um, and I'm going to go. And I'm going to go with Kenny Omega as, w as AEW World Champion. Okay, cool. That's cool. Uh, in a year. Next summer. Next summer. Cody definitely, as far as AEW goes, Moxley is going to be five time champion. <laughs> Dude, he's four. He's technically four time champion. Right? right, three and a half. There's the asterisk because of I don't like that. Whatever. They need. They need. They need to. That's going to screw up his thing. Kyle says, "I'm thinking Wardlow." Oh, Wardlow. Yeah. Uh, ridiculous. Let's see. Now, uh, you want to do one more so we can get out of here, or no? Yes, yeah, one more. Okay. Uh, streaming. There we go. What do you think? This is from Daylon. Uh, what do you think about the rumors of a Bray Braun cross Scarlet and Dexter stable? I mean, that's a lot. Uh, I, I think they're, you know what? If they could do it, I don't know who would benefit from this, right? Because Scarlet yeah. and, 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 and cross, they're an act. Yeah. Braun just came back. Like, you got to look at who's benefiting. Is it is it taking away from Dexter Loomis or mm -hmm. is it adding more to him? Yeah, that that's tricky because I think with, what they're doing with Dexter now is they're I think they're slowly gonna have some nice character, great character. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they're gonna go back to like some of the NXT stuff with a lot of the guys on the main roster now. Um, also, like the White Rabbit could have been, or I don't know if it's gonna be, but you know, Cross, Cross. A lot of people thought that because that was his theme in Lucha Underground. Yeah, yeah. so. I don't think it's going to be Dexter Loomis uh, uh, carrying cross. You don't want to add, you know, another repackage. You already debuted him. Why are you doing vignettes? <laughs> what if it's Cody? <laughs> no, Cody's a white rabbit. I'm telling you, it could be. I listen, man. I got two options: Bad Bunny or Bray. Bray Bunny. Bray Bunny. Mm -hmm. Ooh, imagine uh, Bad Bunny comes in with the the whole spooky stuff. What would he be? Who Bad Bunny? Yeah, I wanted to have a spooky Puerto Rican gimmick. I, that's tough. I would love it. I don't think he could pull off a spooky. Thing. No, he's such a, he's such as like a like a likable person. Yeah, would you, I? I would like him to see him come out with like Pentagon for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Just Pentagon, uh, uh, pentagrams on. Oh, pentagrams like all over, all yeah. over. Yeah, I love that. Uh, this is from Tim B. Uh, you never heard all the stories about Cody and the Elite not getting along, and that's why Cody wasn't booked with the Elite his last year, huh? What? I think he meant to say you heard stories about Cody and the Elite not getting along, and that's why he wasn't booked with them in his in the last year of AEW. Um I heard of like disagreements. Yeah. Uh but I, I don't it wasn't But he also went off because he had a kid. Right. And but he was also hurt a little bit. So like he he did go back. He did yeah. leave. He was filming stuff. Yeah. So there was a lot of that, but I don't I don't think the coat. I think Cody saw the beginning, the writing on the wall. Yeah, Cody saw the beginning, and, and listen, Cody. Cody is he's a business guy, absolutely. So he's going to go wherever he thinks is going to be best for him and his family. And that's I, at the end of the day, that's where he went. Will he not ever go back? I don't know. But people yeah. leave all the time. People switch jobs all the time. Like there's right. no animosity when you do that. Exactly. I also think Cody did. In an interview, say, you know, sometimes we butted heads, but I love those guys. I wouldn't be here without them, but they do their thing and I do my thing, right? I think he said something along those lines. And yeah. also, I I think it's interesting where I do firmly believe Cody is probably top five current pro wrestlers that carry themselves in an exemplary fashion outside of the ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look how he dresses when he walks around. And yeah. also, he's another guy. You see him at an airport. Right. Right? You are going to look at him. For about a couple seconds and say, okay, I don't know who he is. Right. If you don't know. Mm -hmm. But he's somebody. Right. Great suit. Big blonde dude. Nobody walks around with a neck tattoo in a, in a blue suit with that big bleach blonde hair like that regularly. Fucking neck too. You think he's going to get a neck too? He's going to get a matching one on the other side? Oh, imagine he gets another one right next to him and they're kissing. What would it take for you to get a neck tattoo? Enough money that I will never have to work again. <laughs> right, like enough money that I could I could become that guy. Okay. Uh, here we go. 
Would Punk really, this is from Shadow Ranger, would Punk really be a draw if he went anywhere other than WWE or AEW? I, um, yeah, I think they would be interested in him, but he wouldn't go because nobody else could afford him. Right. I think that's the thing that people don't think about. You know, I believe those were the rumors with Bray Wyatt, where like when he was out going of his to contract, impact, Bray, Bray should go to somebody wrote them, Bray should go to MLW. I'm like, for they what? Can't, free? They can't pay him. Yeah. For free? I believe his asking rate for a signing was like fifteen thousand. It was or something, something nuts, like that. yeah, yeah, which is fine. Um, this is from Eddie Gomes. Gomez, do what do you think about the AEW requested releases? Uh, who requested a release? Malachi, obviously, mm-hmm. but that's that's for his own personal issues. Well, yeah, wish the guy the best, obviously. Yeah. Uh, listen, I I think everybody should be given the right to leave if they mm-hmm. don't want to work anywhere. You can't you can't hold somebody hostage. At your job, yeah. it doesn't work like that. A contract is, yeah, I mean, they got some contracts. They're independent contracts. They, they could, listen, I, I, I just, if you're unhappy, you should leave. I always feel that way. Yeah. If you feel that your problem will not be resolved, you should leave. By the way, we got a final count for this, for this show. It was over 13,000 uh, tickets. Okay. Yeah. How much could that building hold? 20-something thousand. Okay. But it was, you know, but you also have to look at it. They're not utilizing those skyboxes. They're only right, utilizing right. the president's skybox, and that's because those skyboxes belong to people. Right. Um, so that's not being utilized. You also had that top row that wasn't being utilized. You know, was 13,000 is very impressive. They did they did 20,000 last year, first time, 13,000 a second year. Yeah. You know, if the bucks were there and you built this a little bit stronger and now people know that you're going to get these title changes, I think they could do 13, 14,000, 15,000 yeah. regularly in this building. Well, also, I think um, it was really cool that all of Dynamite was title matches. All of Dynamite was title matches, and this was a million-dollar gate. Yeah. Great. Great job all around. They... So a lot of people are saying not many suits were... The, the, the suites weren't all accessible. Mm-hmm. The president's suite was accessible, and I think maybe another one on the other side. But uh, you didn't have any of the other suites open. Yeah. Because I would have I gotten a suite yeah. if it was open. I would much rather do a suite. Oh, that would have been... I mean, let's, let's look into that for next year. I don't, they're not doing it. You, know, you never know. You never know. They brought a lot of money into the flushing area and i think next year they need to have frame director the nanny <laughs> the nanny needs to be there hi guys all right uh let's do one more question hi mr kanakis <laughs> uh one more question guys make it a good one and then we're gonna see you next week all right let's see what, oh more. there we go Here, here's good okay we'll, we'll just take this one all right uh hang on one second let me punch this up this is from eddie again do you guys think it's going to happen do we see kenny omega finally go to wwe you know what i will predict we will see kenny omega wrestling wwe at one point within the next 10 years 10 years uh, i'll say six wow within the next six years okay entrant number three in the royal rumble Kenny Omega? Kenny Omega? What's the difference between a 4.0 and a 4.6? 30 to 40 effing grand. 4.0 and a 4.6. Uh, yeah. yeah. You don't get it. I don't get it. Bachelor, tell him why he doesn't get it. Tell me why I don't get it. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, I think Kenny. Listen, I'm yeah. cool. Okay. You're a cool dude? I'm a cool dude. Yeah. Cool dude. I know things. Oh, yeah? What do you know? 1995. What do you Unreasonable know? doubt. Yeah. What's the difference between a 4.0 and a 4.6? Jay-Z's great... I, I consider that my favorite Jay-Z album. Not a Jay-Z fan. I, I like his early stuff. Arguably, he has been called the best rapper of all time. I don't like like sad Jay-Z that we yeah. got later on. He Can got you do a Jay-Z sad. impression? I can't. I wish I could. He's so sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um... Yeah, no, not a Jay-Z fan. I've been listening to a lot of Nas lately, though. I, I have a very unpopular opinion. I think It Was Written was better than Illmatic. A, they're both great albums. They're both great yeah. albums. Uh, I just, I have a very strong bond with music. Yeah. There, there's music that brings me to a certain place. Yeah, yeah. And I had a, a mixtape of It Was Written from Jamaica Avenue. Okay. That was a totally different album, uh-huh. but it was like similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I fell in love with that album. Yeah. And then I and then I got it. it was written. It was even better. Uh, and I never got Illmatic. Yeah. Illmatic didn't do it for me until really? later on. What yeah. about Stillmatic? Stillmatic's pretty decent. 
So still, no, what, a which one was the third? What was the third album? I forgot. It wasn't Stillmatic. Stillmatic was okay. Uh, there was one. Yeah, yeah. I I used to buy those like cannabis versus fabulous uh-huh. mixtapes. You know. Let's look this up real quick. This is the 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 Nas wrap up. I am. I am was the throne. Yeah, with Project Windows on, and and I got to tell you, the mic the the pre cut version of Project Windows was way better than what was put on the album. Okay. Illmatic ninety four. It was written. I am Nostradamus. Yeah. Still Nostradamus Matic. sucks. Stillmatic was uh two thousand one. Nostradamus was the double LP. Okay. Yeah, but Illmatic is a debut album. Pretty fantastic. Illmatic, no, dude. Illmatic yeah. was like groundbreaking, but I just enjoyed. It was written better. You know who yells at me for this? Diana. Why? Because she's a huge Nas fan Mm -hmm. and loves Illmatic. All right, we got to go. We got to wrap it up. I got to go to work. All right. All right, guys. uh, That's it for this week. We love each and every one of you. I'll be back this Sunday, Wrestling Observer Live. I'll find out who my guest is probably in the next day or two because I haven't planned one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe it's just me. Maybe listen. I mean. You want to do it? Maybe, yeah. All right. You could do remote. Me and Tony Khan. Tony Kanakis. (laughs) Me and Tony Kanakis. When, When Tony Khan comes on the show. Which I will manifest if he does. He has he to be in character as a Greek bakery worker. Not for nothing. I mean, clearly the guy probably watches Wrestling Observer. Or he just watches this, which would be cool. You know? <laughs> He's never even heard of Wrestling Observer Live. Never heard of Wrestling just Observer Just watches Mat Men. Who's, who's Dave Meltzer? Yeah, who's Dave? Yeah. What's a baby? What's, what's a baby? What's that? That's a great... Someone needs to make that. <laughs> Where it's Macho Man babysitting, and he's like, what's a baby? <laughs> Can you watch my kid? Can you watch Can you my watch baby? Can you watch my baby? What's that? What is it? What is that? All right. All right. Let's go. See you guys later. Later. Bye-bye. Looks like a little person.